Fort Meade wrapped up its Sexual Assault and Abuse Prevention Month observance with the 704th 5K Teal Run. The runners received a special reception at the finish line. Hello and welcome to Meade Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, Fort Meade hosted the Armed Forces Bowling Championships, and we take a look at this year's Earth Day observance. These stories and much more, but first, the United States Army Garrison Fort George G. Meade provides 120 military units and government organizations the facilities and infrastructure required to complete their missions. The Garrison Command welcomed a new Command Sergeant Major in a change of responsibility ceremony at Club Meade. Outgoing Command Sergeant Major Andre Welch relinquished his responsibilities to Command Sergeant Major Richard Moore. As I embark on my next chapter, the next chapter of my journey, I do so with a profound sense of gratitude, pride, and optimism. My time at Fort Meade has been nothing short of extraordinary. I'm deeply honored to have had the opportunity to serve alongside the finest men and women of our nation has to offer. Together we have accomplished remarkable feats and I am confident that the legacy of excellence we have left behind will continue to inspire future generations to, for years to come. So this installation, I understood the importance of it, which is why I had it ranked so high on the places I wanted to be. Because again, to support the warfighter, you got to be at the point of friction. And this is that point of friction when it comes to establishing dominance over our adversaries to continue to support the greatest land fighting force that has ever existed. In other news, Fort Meade's Director of Public Works Environmental Division hosted this year's Earth Day observance in festivities held at Burba Lake. Participants included the local raptor group, Owl Moon. This is Luna. She's a seven-year-old barred owl, female. She's a falcon rebird, she's not wild. Other exhibitors included NASA, who brought a tabletop presentation of a stormwater runoff model. The guest with the largest presence was the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Patuxent Research Refuge, located just up the road from Fort Meade. We're a, a neighbor of Fort Meade and offer 13,000 acres of nearby nature for about 10 million people in the D.C. Baltimore commuting corridor. And so today we're just trying to connect better with our community and appreciate being here on the base to tell people about some of the recreational opportunities available at the refuge, hunting and fishing, biking, hiking, bird watching. This year's Earth Day celebration included a bird box decorating competition. We spoke with Stanley Geyer, an eighth grader at MacArthur Middle School, whose entry tied for first place. I was trying to make it based off birds flying to the horizon. A lot of times, you know, people like to take pictures of birds flying to the nice red orange sky. Before we wrap up our coverage of this year's Earth Day event, we'd like to recognize Roger Francis, a Vietnam vet that has been to every single Earth Day celebration ever held at Fort Meade. I come out because I enjoy it. I run across old friends, which aren't, there are not many left anymore. It's just a good time. It's a good showing. We couldn't agree more. For more on Earth Day and the local environment, check out the latest episode of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified, available just about anywhere you find your podcasts. Elsewhere, for the first time since 2019, Armed Forces Sports held the Armed Forces Bowling Championships. The event took place right here at Fort Meade's Bowling Center, The Lanes. We'll get to the results in a moment, but first we asked Mike Sinek, manager of The Lanes, about what preparations were made for the championships. Basically, it's managing a bunch of people coming in from all over the world, uh, dealing with getting the protocol for the opening ceremonies on Friday is, has been interesting, just making sure we secure an honor guard and a chaplain and make sure the colonel's on board and um, working with local sponsors and then with the All-Army Sports sponsors just to get everything in place, banners hung, all that kind of stuff. Logistics. Mostly it's just logistics. It's just an honor to be able to host this event. I'm really looking forward to the opening, official opening ceremonies of the inner service. Um, my wife was a former Army and inner service champion, so it was kind of neat to bring, you know, what I remember from back in the day and bring it here to Fort Meade. Turning to the results, the Air Force dominated the championships, winning gold in both men's and women's team and men's and women's individual events. For a complete rundown, go to facebook.com slash armed forces sports. And finally this week, a reminder from Club Mead, tickets for this year's father-daughter ball are still available. It's coming up June 1st from 5 to 8.30 p.m. The evening features dinner, a magic show, photo booth, a DJ and dancing, and more. This event sells out every year, so don't wait. Call 301-677-6969 for details. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann for everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office. Have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.